Ukraine's Kursk operation is a form of psychological warfare. The irony is that for dictators like Russia's Vladimir Putin, psychological warfare is the foundation of their rule. This is the opinion shared by defense and national security expert Michael Peck in an article for CEPA. The analyst noted that dictators wage psychological warfare against their own populations to intimidate any potential political opposition, other countries, to convince rivals and potential victims of the futility of resistance and to undermine national debates. Putin has spent years undermining Ukraine, including disinformation, the seizure of Crimea at gunpoint, and terrorist bombings of Ukrainian cities with missiles and drones. And now the tables have turned. It is Putin who must respond to Ukraine's actions, the article emphasizes. Peck stressed that it is the Russian leader who must think about whether he can trust his military to defend the Russian borders, and he must explain to his people how a war that was supposed to prevent a mythical threat of NATO invasion ended with foreign troops invading Russia. Critics of Operation Kursk point out that Putin has not redeployed troops from eastern Ukraine, where the Russians continue to take slow but steady advances. They argue that Ukraine would be better off using the assault troops at Kursk to shore up its defenses in the east and south. But that is precisely what Putin wants, for Ukraine to continue to dance to Moscow's tune, wearing down its best troops and equipment as it responds to crisis after crisis, the author added. In his view, the Kursk operation allows Ukraine to introduce uncertainty into the equation. Putin can continue to weakly defend the Russian-Ukrainian border while concentrating his forces for an offensive inside Ukraine. But this option no longer provides certainty. It is now a calculated risk that Ukraine will not attack some other part of Russia. Dictators like Putin, for all their menace, hate uncertainty more than anything else, the analyst argues. Ukrainian soldiers entered the territory of the Kursk region in early August, destroyed several bridges there, and liberated dozens of settlements. A military commandment's office was created in the liberated territory. The Russian troop group in the Seam River area of the Kursk region has no chance of holding this territory, Ukrainian military expert Pavel Narozny said on air at Radio NV. Our aviation and artillery are working very closely there. All the residents of Sumy write about the planes that are constantly moving towards the Kursk region. I think that this group has two options, either to swim across the river, which is technically possible. The Seam is a small river, not the Dnieper. Or to surrender. And this situation, it completely closes the flank. And this means that our group, which is in the Kursk region, it plans to hold out there for a long time, said Narozny. At the same time, he added that the Russian command is not ignoring the situation in the Kursk region and has already transferred there those troops that were supposed to be sent to the Pokrovsk direction. These are, of course, not very combat-ready units. However, they are standing, digging in and holding back the further advance of Ukrainian troops. It cannot be said that we are continuing the pressure there. However, even in the last two to three days, there has been progress. And if these units were not in the Kursk region, they would be either in Kharkiv region or in the Pokrovsk direction, added Narozny. According to him, most of the assault operations are currently taking place in the Pokrovsky direction, since the Russian Federation cannot yet conduct active combat operations in several places at the same time. Their peak of capability has already passed and it will continue to decrease. And the equipment and the number of people, it is also not easy to constantly replenish. The Kursk operation is already making its mark. The enemy does not have the resources to attack, to conduct a dense attack, which he is conducting in Pokrovsk in several directions. Our general staff reported three attempts to storm the Volchansk direction, but I am more than sure that they have been repelled and that we will counter-attack there. After all, the enemy has thrown back all, more or less, combat-ready units to the Kursk direction from Kharkov. Therefore, the fact that they are cutting the territory there, recapturing something, this is an absolutely logical step. Narozny explained. 